Clean up, aisle three. Clean up, aisle three. If I didn't get into enough trouble dropping the ink bottle on the floor, this just came in the mail. This is the Cutalola electric uh, dot maker, and it's a pen that automatically does dots. I had to try it. Um, this is not a sponsored video, and this is the first time I'm opening it. Okay, it comes in a nice tin. Is it upside down? Yes. Okay, let's see. The instructions. We don't need no stinking instructions. Okay, it comes with ink. Now, does it come with a charger on it? I feel something under there. It has, okay, there's the charging wire. Nice and hidden away. Okay, let's see. It's rather easy to open. I hate packages that take 20 minutes to open up. Okay, so this feels interesting in the hands. I probably have to charge it first. Waiting for the Cutalola to charge. Let's play a game. Now, I didn't make this game up. You can blame Tammy because she sent me a picture and I thought this was so much fun. She she started this, she got the credit. She was working with her pencils and she had them all out. So she was working out of the Joanna. She was working out of the, one of the Joanna Basfoot books and each little piece she did it in a different pencil. So I was thinking, wow, that was a lot of fun. Let's see if we could do this. She sent it to me to identify. So here are six mushrooms. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Each one of these was done in a different pencil. See if you could identify the pencil. Your choices, Karen Dash, Shipping Farben, Orteza, Prismacolor, Polychromos, and Holbein. Again, Karen Dash, Shippenfarben, Arteza, Prismacolor, Polychromos, and Holbein. Let's see how you guys do. Try to figure it out. I'll let you know the answers later on in the video. It's been a full 24 hours since I opened this. And that's because when I first got it to work after it was charged. I felt like that there was a pretty big learning curve that I needed to go through to be able to use this pen and give it a proper review. And I'm kind of sitting on the fence with this and I'm going to tell you all the pros and all the cons that I found. It's a lot of fun. I got to admit, after playing with this for several hours, I really started to enjoy it. So I gotta give it it give it that. It's a nice toy. I did find it innately satisfying doing the dots and filling them in. There's just something nice about it. As far as it doing a really good job with the dots, not really. They're kind of like little ink splatters. You have to hold the pen very straight. If you start holding it like this, which your hand tends to do because of the way you write, they it splatters. If you hold it straight up, dots become more consistent. So that was like a learning curve and a little bit of muscle memory that I needed to develop. A little bit of pressure you put, the darker the dot. The light of the pressure, the light of the dot. So that was another learning curve that I had to be able to 
manipulate the pen. I could see somebody working with this pen for a really long time and getting really good at it. It's not something you're, that's going to happen immediately. You're going to feel that learning curve. You're going to feel the touch of the pen and learning the touch of the pen. And that's with any art form that you go through. Now, there are some negatives on this pen and I need to talk about them. First of all, it's the quality of the pen. I paid a lot of money for this. I paid $65 for it. And honestly, after I bought this, I started looking on Wish.com because I got the feeling that this pen just belonged on Wish.com. It was one of those electronic things that I felt probably could have been a little bit better. The on and off button, these are cheap plastic on and off buttons. They don't always work, as you can see. It... I don't expect a learning curve for turning something on and off, push button, unpush button, but there is a learning curve for that. You push it once and it's slow. You might as well not even bother on slow. The dots are all over the place and it stops. The battery is not powerful enough to run it on slow. If you then, once you're in slow mode, you push it twice you'll get a faster and I don't think I would use this pen on anything except the, for the high one and then you can go turning it off has not been easy okay I'm holding it kind of low so my dots are dark and here's higher up turning it off you push it once, push it twice. Okay, you push it twice. It goes back into slow mode and then once into off. It's not an exceptional learning curve, but instead of sitting there going push, 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 which I tend to do, kind of like the TV remote, you have to get used to it and it has to become second nature to you and that I don't feel was a very good mechanism it might have been better if it had two buttons in the design of this and well I didn't design it so but I think two buttons would have been better or maybe one of those push toggles for high and low the battery on here is very poor lucky that my workstation is right near my computer and I can just plug this in. It turns purple. And then I have an endless supply going to the battery. Other than that, I probably would be really disappointed in what the battery is, is done. It goes down really fast. So once, twice, work with it, plugged in. Once, once, twice, once. I give it maybe, now let's see if we can add this up and it would make it look better. For precision, I would give it a 7 out of 10. For quality, I would give it probably a 5 out of 10. For functionality, I would give it an 8. So how it functions, an 8 out of 10. That's where it was a little bit, it was fun. For enjoyability, it definitely a 9 out of 10. Did I enjoy it? It was satisfying, yes. It functions, yeah, when it works. Quality, not so good. And the precision, the dots, seven out of 10, it was okay. So what do you do with it for $65? For $65, I don't think this is worth it. For $20 to $30, maybe. I would say 30 is pretty high, I would give it 20 to 25 and I would say if this was $20 thing 
I would say, yeah, have a great time, 20 bucks. It'll last until it lasts for $65. I expected a little bit more from this. The packaging was great. I don't think this is going to last me more than maybe two or three pictures and then it's going to die. It feels like it came off of Wish, although it didn't. To create art with it, yeah, you can. But it's not as good. Like, your dots are not as good as when you really stipple. But on, this, on the other hand, stippling is hard on the hands, hard on the eyes. If you use this and you get a, the general dots down and then go back with a pen and do real dots in addition to this, I think it's a winner. This one is kind of like buyer beware. I did like it. I did not like the price of it. It was fun. It's got a lot of room for improvement. Before I conclude my review, there's just a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. One, when you change the ink, there's this little wax ball. You gotta take that off. It just flicks right off. Two, when you remove this, there's going to be a spring on the inside. I don't want to do it again because I don't want to damage that spring. But just keep in mind that spring needs to be there. I don't know if you buy this, you can buy extra springs. I would hope you could because it's really flimsy, really tiny. And I would imagine after it's gone like this a million times, that spring is going to wear out. This is also magnetic run. It's magnetic driven. So if you have a pacemaker, they do put a, a warning. This is keep them away from your credit cards. Anything that could be damaged by um, magnetics. If you have any sort of wrist ailments or hand ailments, it has a funny sensation when you first use it and you stop. It made my hands very tingly and almost like electric was going through it after using this for a while that sensation went away so it really was predominant the first like couple of times i turned it on and off and then i didn't feel it anymore and that's my honest review on this pen um before i call it quits for the night i wanted to show you guys my new setup now i've been talking about wanting to redo my room for a while now but you know Life takes over, and it's always the last thing that happens. Well, since I dropped the bottle of ink all over the floor, destroyed the floor, we have to repaint the floor, uh, I decided I was going to move the furniture around and see what a new arrangement would be like. So, welcome to my new setup. I used to have a bookcase over here, but that blocked... These are French doors... And it blocked the door from opening. So I was only able to open up one half. And this room gets really stuffy. So it's much more comfortable now that I have a little bit more of a breeze and I can open this up. So it doesn't feel like I'm like locked away from my family too. So I have a new light set up. You're going to notice that my pictures and my video are going to be much brighter. Well, my desk now used to be over here where the birds are now. I moved it from over there because this corner of the room is really very dark. And I moved it over here and I got new lights. They're not really new. I've had them for a while, but they weren't set up in here. Now I have all the light I need. So a lot of people also ask me, and this is funny, what this thing is on my tripod. It's a bandage. <laughs> my, my tripod has a boo-boo. You see how... This goes around and out. I cannot find this design. And my coloring books fit in here. So that is why I have a bandage on it because I lost the little part that balances it. And until I find this exact one, because this is the one I want, I'm stuck with the old one. And I've got paint on it and <laughs> you name it, I have it on it. So... This is exactly where I color. My computer is right there, my computer screen right in front of me, and this is where I color. Now, my problem before is I had no horizontal space. Seriously, if I had pens on my desk, this 
little box was all the room I had to color. And I was knocking things over. That's how I knocked the ink over. My chair. My husband got this for me. I could sleep in this chair. It's like oversized. Like I'm all of five feet tall. And this is a chair built for men who are like over six feet. It's huge. I could sit in this chair Indian style. Lay back. It's so comfortable. But with my desk having been... Over here, we've got a guest bed in here. And with the desk and the chair, I was constantly knocking in, and I felt so claustrophobic in there. It was terrible. So now I am comfortable. I have the whole entire room open to me now. And I'm very comfortable. I've been there for 48 hours now, and it's great. I took these cabinets down here were underneath that. So I really lost the top of this desk because it was underneath that. My father built last year for me. I brought it out here and we got a, a desktop without the desk. And it's perfect. And now I have all my pencils right next to my desk. For you OCD people, it stacks perfectly. Like, it is perfect in there. And I have all my pencils. Now, I even arranged them and cleaned them out. My nubbies, my sharpies, I have an extra container. My fixatives, my black and white, my pastels. This was an old wine crate that I just turned on its side and it had like, like, I don't know, these things that pull out, I guess, to hold the wine, but they were perfect. I got these at a dollar store. So on the top, I put brushes and acrylic pens, and that's like your Posca, etc. Then I've got my little pen collection which considering I've only been doing pen and ink for about a month and a half, I'm amassing a lot of pens. Um, I've got my, which was perfect, my color it pencils fit right in there. And then on the bottom I have my pencils and my blenders. I haven't cleaned out the drawers yet. But you see these, let me get them out. These are from my, this stack is from my Prismacolors. And I really don't keep the boxes anymore because I put my pencils in cases. But I save these trays because these are great for when they're on the desk to keep them from rolling off. You put them in the trays. And this stacks perfectly right in there. What I want to do eventually is clean out these drawers. Right now I have other crafting stuff in there. I want to put the trays in there so all I have to do is open up the drawer and the pencils will be lined up and I just have to have the drawer open and I have all my Prismacolors out right in front of me in their individual slots. So never throw those trays away. And there's Bob Ross. Always watching out. I stole that <laughs> from my daughter. She takes everything of mine. So I took that of hers. And it's rotten because my other daughter got it for her. So I stole <laughs> the gift my one daughter got for my other daughter. But it's okay. I told her I'd give it back to her someday. It's Bob Ross. Come on. She has so many of these figures. Okay, now I have my birds, and they're molting right now, so their cage is a disaster. They also thought it would be fun to argue with me about their new place in the room, and they decided to dump over their food cups. So they're tired right now. You can see that's Mushy Boo Boo's over there, and the other one 
is right there. Yes, his name is the other one. It's Mushi Boo Boo's and the other one. And then up here, I just keep my books and obviously ribbon. I've got my work board my dad built me and he put up some shelves up there. So that's my room. Everybody always likes to look at the space and I don't blame them. I like to look at other people's spaces too. So this is where I am and I think this will work out the best. Also, right next to me, if you go down, I've got all my Prismacolor pencils. Yeah, 240 in the morning. I'm going to bed. Nay night. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.